Hi guys, welcome back to our channel and today we will tell you two reasons why we are looking for property deals with a minimum ROI target of 25 to 30%. So for this, we are going into one of our latest deals, which you can also see on our website. So first, before we go into the two reasons, we go quickly through the numbers of that deal. So if you guys have watched our previous video, which I will link up here, uh, you would know that we bought it from a repossession, so like a corporate sale. We got it for 88000 and then we spent a total of 73000 on the whole refurb in terms of other costs, so including uh, HMO license, building control, uh, fire door inspection, fire risk assessment, all these. All the other costs uh, add up to 10,000. So we are all in the deal for 171,000 pounds, and in the end, we got a revaluation of 180,000. It is currently all tenanted, all rooms are occupied, and it's renting at a monthly rental of 2,200 pounds. Uh, once you take away all the expenses and the mortgage payments, we are at around 1,000 pounds monthly cash flow. So that gives us a return on cash left in the deal, 33%. 33% ROI sounds a lot and um, it is probably a lot, but there are two very specific reasons why we are aiming for an ROI of that level. The first reason is in property, a lot of things can go wrong. A lot of things do get wrong and they are costly. So we want to de-risk our business by starting off with a high ROI, we're putting in safety margins. So that is, we're putting a contingency in our refurbishment. And in our recent video, we spoke about the things that have gone wrong and where we uh, dip into our emergency fund or in, into our contingency buffer. So Which all of that- I will link up here. Yeah, so all of that um, has been used, but could there have been even more problems? Possibly. After all, it's property and we're refurbishing a rundown property. That is on the refurbishment part. Then we come to the revaluation and there are things like COVID happening and there's a risk that we get downvalued. So we have to factor that into our account. Um, and then once it's tenanted, then we have tenants that cannot pay. They can pay less than market rent for whatever reason, maybe because there's a pandemic and there are not that many tenants anymore. Um, or we have unexpected maintenance. So all these things do go wrong uh, when you're a landlord and you're operating property as a business. That's why we are aiming for high ROIs so that even for things that we don't even consider can happen, don't impact us a lot because we have big margins in, in, our, in our deals. And reason number two is because we are working with private investors on most of our deals and of course on this one as well. So usually we are giving our investors six to 8% uh, fixed return annually in order to be able to give that amount of returns and ha still having the leftover for ourselves, we need to have a higher ROI on, a, on each deal. So that's basically the profit margin that we're operating on. We are putting our investors first because they lend to our business. We want to make sure that they get their returns um, and they're happy. And then whatever is left over, that is the margin that we can then use in our business for the next project or maybe for taking out a salary for us. So the higher the profit margin, the less risky it is for the investor and the less risky it is for us running a business. So those are our two main reasons why we are looking for deals with a minimum ROI of 25% and above. And if you have liked this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you have any questions, just leave them down below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. See you on the next one. Bye. Oh, I, I keep looking at myself. Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> there is the okay. number. Okay. Did, did you say it? That sounds like a really um, big number for... Uh... So those are... So those are our two reasons. Those are our <laughs> two reasons. <laughs>